What's up guys? UFC London has Nathaniel Wood facing Vince Morales since Ludwig Schulinian has pulled out. I hope I'm saying that name correctly. It's a very unique one, but it's going to be an absolutely still banging fight. I think Nathaniel Wood's going to open as a massive favourite in this card. I'd be shocked if he hasn't. Vince Morales, he's got some skills, but has he gone off to beat Nathaniel? We'll see. But before we get into it guys, this video is sponsored by Full Reptile Collective, brought to you by Dan Hardy. Head over to their website at fullreptile.co.uk where you can find anything from training gear, t-shirts, hoodies, all the way to coffee. For an exclusive 10% off, use Dan Said So at checkout. Make sure to also check out their YouTube channel for some of the best MMA content out there, bar my own. Let's get back to the video. All right guys, let's start with Nathaniel Wood because Nathaniel is the absolute man. You know, in UK MMA, he's been around the block. You've seen how tough he is from fights like Josh Reed fight. If anyone hasn't seen that, Go back, check that out. Josh Reed has him against the cage, nearly finishes him, absolutely laying on the pressure. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Nathaniel does not go down, slips a couple punches, tires Josh out by letting him hit him in the head, knocks Josh out. Phenomenal, you know. After that, a sub one minute knockout in his final fight in Cage Warriors. Brilliant atmosphere as well. I was there at the Indigo in London, it was absolutely amazing. His first fight, obviously, against Johnny Eduardo, had a lot of problems, you know, before he got the finish. Um, kept getting jabbed, busted his face open. You know, nerves might have come into that a lot, but, you know, the next fights after that, you know, he had the Andre Yule fight. That was a good one. Andre Yule came out the gates, you know, looking really slick. The commentary, I think it was Dominic Cruz at the time, and Joe Rogan was saying that Andre Yule's got an absolute piston of a left hand. He's very long for the weight class. He had a massive reach advantage over Nathaniel, and Nathaniel does... One thing here that I want, he does throughout his all his fights, which is the body shot. He uses a front body kick better than most guys ever will. His inside low, low kicks are chopping. Every fight has them. Stops the movement, stops the power hand of everyone. The only time that's fouled is against John Dodson and we saw what happened there. Lights out. John Dodson still has the power for that miniature man and, and that was a learning curve for Nathaniel for the first time, you know. He's got two losses in the UFC, he's fought six times. The other one was to Casey Kenny. We saw how close Casey Kenny got to, you know, getting a title shot. He, he went the distance with Dominic Cruz, put on a good performance, not a great performance, came up with a loss, but, you know, that's the upper echelon, you know, when he fought that. After that, fought John Castaneda, put on an absolute clinic again, chopping that leg. And if you see the stats after the second round, I think they highlighted them on the screen, it was like 39 shots to the head, like, 15 to the body, but like also 40 to the legs. He was chopping that tree of Castaneda down, and Castaneda tried late to come on, and he just he just couldn't do anything to Nathaniel, couldn't get close to him. And it, you know, Nathaniel has absolute distance management covered. He he manages to get his reach even longer by you know really utilizing shoulder pops. He's got a piston as himself of a right hand as well. Really can close a gap extremely well. Great clinch game. All the wrestling basics as well covered because his coach is Brad Pickett, probably the best wrestler that ever come out of the UK into the MMA scene and actually use it offensively rather than defensively, which is nice to see as well. I think Brendan Lockland's got a great wrestling game as well to him over in the PFL. He's got Ashley Grimshaw in his corner, who's a very high level black belt jiu-jitsu practitioner and that showed as well when he got the, you know, the rear naked chokes, he's got a couple submissions. He's known as a knockout guy in the MMA scene uh, in Britain. He's known as a knockout guy in the British scene, but he comes over to the UFC and gets a few finishes by submission, and we're like, okay, damn, you know, he, he can do it all. And he's that's that's literally Nathaniel. He's got the well-rounded skills, perfectly down for someone his age, and it's only looking sharper since he's. I think the last fight he had was October 2020, so it's been a while, but he's looking to get back in it. So Nathaniel's best option here is obviously what he normally does, he front body kick, he saps the energy of the opponent, he lures you in and then he counters with that beautiful right hand. And he doesn't overthrow these things, you know, he doesn't get caught off balance, really throwing 100% shots all the time. He throws enough to get you where he wants you, to sap your energy, to make it, you know, a cruise fest for him. And he's putting on an absolute clinic and I think he's going to come back and he's really going to want to make a statement against someone like Vince Morales, who's dangerously taking this fight on two weeks notice against someone that is he's the prospect for a reason he's really damn good so morales had his first opportunity in the ufc with the contender series and pilati managed to actually choke him out in a fight of the night contender right there had to go away went to bellator and came back as a quick stand in almost and, and managed to get contract out of a, a decent performance but still a loss to song Yudong at the time 
I would say Morales has absolutely beautiful fundamentals. He's got a great chopping low kick of his own. He's got a beautiful one too. His boxing seems to be crisp. His head movement is decent as well. His movement is kind of ploddy, which I don't like, whereas Nathaniel is completely on the go. He's pure lateral. He just doesn't stop moving, doesn't stop chopping, doesn't stop working. His gas tank is phenomenal. The gas tank is the issue here. Morales, when he has a full camp, seems to have gas tank issues. Against someone that is going to be continuously front kicking your body and chopping your legs and really, you know, the pressure Nathaniel puts on people from the get-go is what happened to Andre Yule. Andre Yule looked good for three minutes. He looked bad the rest of the whole time. And it wasn't just because he, he couldn't do anything off his back in the second and third rounds. It's because he had no energy. He had nothing to give, no explosiveness, you know, to just get out of positions or even to crack him with a shot to make him respect and back off. Nothing. Morales is going to really have to make Nathaniel respect his power immediately, and I don't think he can do that. His best bet to me is trying to lure Nathaniel in, make it a very dirty fight. Nathaniel and his team like a, a great British top team, that is, they like a nice clean fight. They like it very technical, all their way, as most teams do, but they're very technical, those guys. They're very precise, and they've got beautiful game plans down there. They know how to implement them. And most of the time they work. They're very smart guys down there. You know, they've got great training partners down there as well. A lot of guys that sort of size, 135, 145s. It's gonna be a tough night for Morales in my opinion. I think Nathaniel wins this all day. I thought he beat Ludwig as well. I thought that was a better fight um, to, you know, try and beat Nathaniel. I think Nathaniel's gonna open up as a big favorite for a reason. And I can see a finish here as well. I think it's gonna be a round one or round two for Nathaniel Wood. But what do you guys reckon? Let me know what you think guys, UFC London, I cannot wait, you know, as a guy that lives just outside London, watching Nathaniel's whole career, this is a really good one to start us off and we're going to be doing a breakdown for every single London event, so let me know in the comments guys who you think is going to win this one, check out the other ones and we'll see you in the next video, cheers all.